Hi again everyone! In this video I'll be sharing the top 4 practices I use for supporting mitochondrial health, boosting my overall energy and reducing my chances of metabolic disease, which is incredibly common with the studies showing that only 1 in 8 Americans are metabolically healthy. In case you don't know, metabolic health basically relates to how our bodies take the food we eat and turn it into energy that our cells can then use. When someone is metabolically unhealthy, they can have high blood sugar and also carry excess weight. Hi, I'm Fenella Scutt, a graduate from a Masters of Science at Stanford University, where I also played a high level of varsity sports. If you watched part one, you'll know that I recently set out on a goal to work on my mitochondrial health. As a science nerd and competitive athlete, it was essential for my mental focus in the lab and for my performance on the hockey field after classes. I started using Loombox Red Light Therapy as a tool to support my muscles and joints in sports, but have since progressed to use it all over my body, supporting my mood and energy levels, my blood sugar, and even for healing cuts, bruises, bug bites, and supporting my collagen. Because what's frightening is that from our 20s, our skin produces 1% less collagen every year. Loombox is the leading portable red light therapy device because it's more powerful than most other portable devices. It's third party tested for irradiance, EMF, and bigger with longer battery life too. If you haven't already watched part one of this series, you'll want to go check it out, and it'll play for you after this video too. We discuss a lot of the factors that might be damaging your mitochondria, especially if mitochondrial health is something you're concerned about. And really everyone should be prioritising mitochondrial health, because it's shocking how many factors in our lives nowadays are damping their function. Your middle school teacher probably referred to the mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell, and this is because inside every cell in our body, taking up as much as 25% of the cell volume are thousands of mitochondria, working hard to convert everything we eat into energy we can use. This energy is known as ATP, which is how we fuel all the processes in our body, like burning fat, building muscle, digesting food, repairing wounds, building hormones, literally name any process and the mitochondria have your bag. So in part one, I talked about the five things you don't realize are hurting your mitochondria. So if any of those resonated with you, listen up for my top four tips to combat them and optimize mitochondrial function for better energy. My favorite and the best one is at the end, so be sure to keep watching till the end for the details on that. My first tip for you is how to fuel your body right. For mitochondrial health, we want to be eating a variety of foods over the course of a day or the week, all to make sure you're getting the right vitamins, minerals, and amino acids that help the mitochondria work properly. But what really are the essentials? Well, there's five that you actually want to focus on, and I always make sure to get these in my diet. One is B vitamins, which are in high demand from the mitochondria, and you can get these in high quality proteins and healthy fats, and also leafy greens. Then you might have heard of people taking the supplement CoQ10, but this is also available in natural foods too, especially those that are also high in vitamin B. Carnitine is a third, and it's quite high in red meat and dairy products, but if you eat mostly veggie like me, I try to eat lots of avocados and beans, and so similar to CoQ10 and vitamin B, we're gonna find carnitine in a lot of similar food sources. Magnesium is a fourth, so you might know that bananas are pretty high in this, but you can also get it from avocados, nuts, dark chocolate, beans and lentils, or seeds like pumpkin, flax, and chia. And finally, alpha lipoic acid, which you can find a lot in carrots, beets, spinach, broccoli, and potatoes. So there's a lot of overlap with those food groups, and it's really no surprise. It's designed to be easy if you let your body work with nature. So eating the foods like leafy greens, high quality proteins, and healthy fats will give you a great range of nutrients required for your mitochondria. If you're wondering why I'm putting so much emphasis on diversity, it's because making energy in the body involves a long chain of reactions, and each one requires a lot of different nutrients. So if we want to get all the way from point A, which you could say is ingesting food as fuel, to point B, which is breaking down this fuel and turning it into energy, we do need to get these five essentials. If you don't know where to start, just try adding toppings to a meal like flax and chia seeds at breakfast, or I like to put pine nuts on a salad, or blend some avocado into a dressing at dinner. These all count too. Okay, moving on to number two. Regular exercise is another key factor. Before you freak out, it doesn't have to be working out for hours either. Just enough to put your body under mild stress and increase the demand for energy, which stimulates the mitochondria to work a little harder. The mitochondria also need to exercise too to stay strong. But what does this look like? Well, there's two types of training I always make sure to include. The first is zone two training. This is like a low stress form of cardio, like a long slow run with a friend, you can just do it at talking pace, 
race or just a gentle bike ride and some casual tennis. Zone 2 training really is some new and exciting science and it's really all about keeping the heart rate low but above that resting level. Zone 2 may have enormous benefits for metabolic health and also if you want to improve your fat metabolism. The second type of training I don't go without is strength training but not just body weight training, it's adding weights too. Adding any sort of weight or resistance is so good to protect your bones. And this is really important for older women too, especially as we get older and go through hormonal changes. Exercises like squats, lunges, bicep curls, just adding some dumbbells are an easy way to start, just three sets of 10 a few times a week. Now, number three is often easier said than done. So stay tuned for my number one tip. We all have hectic social lives and a busy work schedule. And these are both crazy demands on our time, all while we try and exercise and eat well and avoid too much of the bad stuff like toxic products that surround us every day. All of this builds up and can lead to low grade or even chronic stress. But I'm not here to tell you about the stress problem. So if there's one thing I could recommend to anyone for stress management, it's dialing down on sleep. If you want to dive more into the how for this, we have an awesome video on sleep with Dr. Viv. Just head over to our channel for that. We do need the sleep to let our brain get rid of all the waste products from the day. And you can imagine that if you're not getting regular sleep, these waste products build up in our body and they're just left circulating, damaging our mitochondria and making us feel groggy, unmotivated, and even unfocused, hungry, and moody. I'm sure we all know how that feels to some extent. So sleep and stress management is really important. Then number four, I'll cut to the chase because I know you've been waiting, is red light therapy. But first, I just wanna talk a bit about the benefits of all types of light. If you start your day with 15 minutes of bright sunlight, it's a great way to micro-stress the mitochondria and just kick them into gear for the day. I've been doing this daily, and even on a cloudy day, I've noticed significant improvements in my energy, as well as my focus and productivity and athletic performance too. Now, back to red light therapy, because this is such a powerful tool and has shown benefits in clinical studies to support healthy skin, muscles, and joint recovery, all by reducing inflammation and really just supporting overall cellular function. If you're wondering how this works, the mitochondria which power our healthy cells are especially responsive to red and near infrared light wavelengths. So when these colors are emitted at a high power, or you might even hear the word irradiance being used, they help the mitochondria work better to produce energy as ATP. It's so easy to add to your day, but if you don't know where to start, it's often easy to just copy someone else's routine. So first off in the morning, before or after brushing my teeth and before I head out for my morning sunlight, I like to do a short six minute breath work practice in front of my loom box. I use the loom box on my face here and I just use the red light setting. Honestly, I feel immediately energized and I've also had a lot of people tell me that my skin looks like it's glowing afterwards so I definitely recommend you give it a try. Then throughout the day, I use Loombox on areas of my body that are feeling a little more sore or achy, like if I have any injuries or I'll use it pre and post workout for a full 12 minute cycle in near infrared mode. So by dinner time, I've probably used Loombox at least four different times on different body parts. Then a few hours before bed, while I'm reading a book or watching my favorite show, or sometimes even when I'm finishing up some work, I'll just use it on the back of my neck for another 12 minutes in combined or near infrared mode. I found this helps me get a more restful night's sleep and dial down that stress that I've been accumulating throughout the day. So why does it work so well? Well, red light therapy is targeting the mitochondria in each area of the body that you use it on. So it really is a jack of all trades when it comes to wellness. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comments what you enjoyed learning about the most. We're always keen to share the most helpful science with you. So if you want to see any more content on the mitochondria topic, leave us your questions or thoughts in the comments and we'll get back to you on that. We also have so many more hacks to share with you and we post a lot of those on our shorts channel. So go subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with those. If you're leaving this video feeling like you still want to learn more about red light therapy, there's a lot of ways that it could benefit you. So download our free guide linked in the caption to join me on a journey to better health and energy. And like I said, if you haven't watched part one yet, it's super helpful, so I've linked it here for you to watch it up next.